Perhaps the question should be, what should be the role of educated or intellectual people in the United States? Now, does that sound like a better question? That's a fine question. In an interview or on a ship, Hyman George Rickover likes to take command. Even at 84, the Admiral can inspect a submarine with the agility of an ensign. In Rickover's mind, these are his submarines. He designed the reactor, he trained the men. One out of four Admiral's commanding ships today was trained by Rickover. His nuclear empire became known as Rickover's Navy, and it ran solely Rickover's way. And you just thought that the rules of the Navy were silly. I don't know, but I never read the rules. I prohibited it. I, we never had a Navy, book of Navy regulations in my office. I prohibited it. One time some guy brought it in, I told him to get the hell out and burn it. Because <laughs> you wanted them to think. I wanted them to think if they knew what their job was, they didn't need a book of regulations. How can you run a Navy if everybody in it acts like you do? If well, everybody I don't considers tell, themselves... I never told the others how to act. I <laughs> acted my own way, my own genius. But you know they said that you were unaccountable. <laughs> I was 100% accountable. If anything had ever gone wrong with a nuclear ship, to whom would, who would they have pointed their finger at? What, what they mean is I would not do all the things they asked me to do. I did the things I thought was right. But that's not working within the system. Isn't that what the military is about, working I, within the system? My job was not to work within the system. My job was to get things done and make this country wrong. What he got done was this, the Nautilus, the world's first nuclear-powered submarine, launched in 1952, the machine that would change military strategy forever. This submarine could stay underwater for months. Rickover stunned the world by building the Nautilus from scratch in only five years, leaving the Russians far behind. Many people called him the best engineer the Navy ever had. Today, there are 141 ships in the nuclear fleet. But once, there was just the man and his obsession with science, not saluting, with engineering, not command. What drew you down into the body of the ship to learn about why the cranks cranked and the... Oh, for Christ's sake, scared. what the hell is there about <laughs> standing up and saluting and dressing up in the uniform? You can put dummies to do that job. That's why you became an engineer? Well, Naval I was engineer. in the Navy, and I could do more, and I could learn more. I couldn't see myself just standing off to the deck watches and saluting and all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. But why did you, why did you work so hard? I was so getting hard? paid for it. No, why did you work so I would have worked hard at any job. No job I ever undertook that I didn't work hard on. Why? Why did it all matter because to you so much? that's what being a human being is, to do the best you can under any circumstances. What is at the heart of leadership? Is it in personality, charisma? No. For example, I have the charisma of a chipmunk. <laughs> so what the hell difference does that make? It was certainly not his personality that won Rick over three distinguished service medals. And to celebrate the Nautilus, a ticker tape parade through the streets of New York, a long way from the tiny town in Russian-occupied Poland where Rickover was born, the son of a tailor. A long way for the boy who landed at Ellis Island at the age of six and grew up in a ghetto in Chicago and won an appointment to the Naval Academy at Annapolis. He was terrified he wouldn't make it. He became the class grind. Did you ever go out on dates? No. Did you ever go to dances? No. <laughs> Did you ever go to the movies? On Saturday night occasionally, I studied. Girls didn't, I, I was so busy trying to get by and stay alive that I didn't worry about girls. You can get along without girls. Yeah, <laughs> don't wink at me. <laughs> was it a very snobbish atmosphere? No. Sure, you, everybody got hazing there at that time, and I got probably somewhat more than the average, so what? I was mature. But why did you get more than other people, you think? Because I was Jewish. They didn't have any very rare Jew to go to the Naval Academy. You know, an interesting thing that later on, many years later, when I had high rank in the Navy, one or two of those, I was going to use the word bastard, <laughs> came around and asked me for favors for them. Those who had treated me that way, I wouldn't do it. You remembered them? Of course. And the most pleasant thing was in becoming an officer and going to a ship and seeing the mature adult attitude in which one was treated as compared to that lousy boy school.